Welcome, 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 welcome. Thanks so much for being here with me and Otis today. Thank you, thank y'all. Yes, 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 yes. I am talking about a story that I love because this woman, Emma, who is essentially the, the right way to do what Megan could have done. She's, she's doing it the right way. In addition to, you all know Rose Hulse as well. She's done it the right way. And there's another example, this Emma, and she is a woman of color that is killing it, folks. Killing it, doing it. And I just look at Megan and think, Megan, <laughs> girl, you are just, ugh. You just went about it the wrong way. But let's just look at how Emma did it so that we can see what Megan could have done and what she's trying to do because what she's trying to do Emma is doing it and I know it is making Megan so jealous so completely just in auf Deutsch fix und fertig she is fix und fertig <laughs> and I love it all right so let's go ahead and talk about it So this is the story, folks. This is the story. Otis, you know, sometimes the best way to learn something, the best way to understand something is to have somebody that can show you the examples. And that's what Miss Emma has done. She has shown how you do it. And you look at her life and, you know, you think Megan didn't have no issues with racism. I mean, you talk about having issues with racism. This Emma dealt with real racism. She had the real deal going on for her, but what did she do? She was just, she just like <laughs> brushed it off because black women that suffer from racism, they don't go screaming and holler, ah, oh, you racist, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. You know, or go do interviews with Oprah, perpetrate racism like, oh, what, you know, the difference between uh, what I went through and what Catherine went through, it's not the same. You know, racist is completely different. Yeah, but when you are used to people being racist towards you, when you really have issues of racism, you don't flinch when someone says, I wonder how, what color the child's going to be. Like, you, you like, what? And that whole thing with Oprah did, what? Like, that was just some dramatization to get people revved up over something that was really a nothing burger. Because women that have gone through real racism, they just like, whatever, I'm doing me, I'm doing me. But how you know Megan wanted to make something out of nothing is because she wanted to go to Hollywood. She wanted to have this life of building this empire off of the backs of her husband. She wanted Harry to give her the opportunities that she could not get herself. And so she tried to pick up and start her life anew with this handbag on her, on her arm. And this is where she messed up. But there's another woman who's done something very similar to what Megan has done, but she's done it the right way. And when I talk about my teachable moments and all these things, you can see how this woman is showing us the, the example of what we need to understand. And I love being able to talk about yet another woman of color who has come into a position of privilege and status and has carried on the right way. And she's no, she knows how to do things and how to carry herself and, you know, how to, uh, you know, c overcome adverse adversity and, and, and really just be a good person overall. Her name is Emma Clarethan, Marchioness of Bath. Her maiden name uh, is McQuinston. McQuinston. She was born on March 26, actually two days after I was born, in 1986. Often known as Emma Weymouth, is a British so socialite and fashion model. She is married to Suelin, this very wealthy man who is, whose father was very controversial. I watched the documentary about her father-in-law, and I'm telling you, if you want to be entertained, watch this documentary. I'll leave a link in the description. So you'll get to understand the kind of family she married into. And it wasn't so traditional in terms of her husband's um, father's life, because he had like these... Well, I'll tell you, it's coming. Okay, so this is what I think is really set Megan off is because 
Emma has just got this contract or she's just secured this campaign with Victoria's Secret. And I found it interesting because some similarities between Megan and what she was trying to do with American Riviera Orchard, it looked very similar in some ways to this Victoria's Secrets campaign with Emma. And I think she was, you know, trying to show people that she could be this, you know, Megan's trying to show people, you know, I can be the, 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 the model of your brand. I could be the face of your brand. But Emma is rocking it because she's doing it, folks. She's doing it. So she just got this campaign with Victoria's Secret and this she's modeling on the runway. She's got a banging body. Uh, she's uh, definitely the kind of woman that could be a Victoria's Secret's model. Um, but she is a British aristocrat and she is now the face of their new perfume. <laughs> I love it. Because you see the example of Megan and all the things that she's trying to do to get recognized. Nobody ain't paying her no mind because they are toxic. And you think about all the work that Megan did to get into the royal family, to meet someone like Harry. You know, she did it. She snagged the prince. But when she snagged him, she blew her opportunity because she thought she could use that to propel what she wanted. And she was never consumed with trying to support her husband that was never on the agenda to support Harry and his initiatives and getting her own celebrity through the support that she would give her husband but she was like okay move out the way you marry me now we're gonna do what I wants to do <laughs> okay and people were like hold up hold up what what happened to Harry you know and we're like no uh-uh you move out the way Megan why are you doing this to Harry and his family? Why are you doing what you're doing to your own family? People recognize these these things that she's done and they don't like it. But Emma, she she went through similar things. But she's she's look at her now. She's the face of Victoria's Secret. So uh, this Marchioness of Bath, Emma Thin, appears uh, in the new campaign of the fragrance Daring, which was shot at her husband's seat, Longleat, in Wiltshire. In a video, she dones a pair of these golden wings. She's wearing this long, flowy black dress that was very similar to what Megan wore when she announced her her brand. But the difference is, is Emma's wearing these Victoria's Secret's wings. But you know, they have the angels things and she's wearing the wings. So she's going down this, the stairs. Um, she poses by a fountain in a fluffy pink coat. She descends in this doorway. But she doesn't appear in some skimpy underwear. She's just, you know, she's very graceful and very, you know, beautiful. Similar to what Megan was trying to do. What Megan was trying to do. So Emma, she really is not a traditional aristocrat. And neither would Megan have been for that matter, right? She was, she, she came in completely different than what she was marrying into. But uh, Emma, she was born to a Nigerian father and an English mother. She married the Viscount Weymouth uh, Sulin in 2013 in a ceremony that was attended by 355 guests. So she had a pretty large wedding as well. Her parents-in-law, however, in attendance, the seventh Marquess of eccentric artist famous for his wifelet. So this is her father-in-law because he had mistresses and he called them wifelets and he was very eccentric. He was definitely a different kind of a man, you know, and uh, these women all accepted him as, okay, we're your wifelets and we'll be your mistresses. And he even had a black one. Oh yeah. But his original wife, the wife, the mother of Emma's uh, husband, she was a racist and she was not allowed to come to the wedding because she was blatantly a racist like in your face racist I, I don't like it why did my son have to marry this black woman <laughs> you know so you want to talk about having things done to you that are racist you know this Emma put up with it but did she let it bother her no because she she knows what what racism is and it's not something that's going to deter me of my objectives in life and that is to be the wife of my husband <laughs> so that never happened in terms of uh, the mother-in-law coming to the wedding. 
uh, Marchioness had she had made this Marchioness she had made some racist comments about the union and therefore she was she was banned from the wedding. Now in 2020, Thin became the first black uh, Marchioness in British history and has said about reimagining the role of a modern Chatelaine. She is said to re-envision the modern Chatelaine, combining running long leaf with glamorous appearances at fashion shows, stints on Strictly Come Dancing and Celebrity Master Chef, and regularly gracing the pages of Hello Magazine. Um, if you go on her Instagram, you're, you're really watching beautiful photos. They have all these wild animals um, on the property. You can go visit. It's it's like a zoo. It's very different. And she came into a role that could have easily defined her in a life that was mundane and boring. But she used her things that she loved, her, her artistic abilities, her baking, her love of fashion. She used these things to incorporate it into the life of the, that she married into. Completely different from what Megan did. She 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 just wanted to use the name of what she married into and took that and ran with it to Hollywood. <laughs> it took the prince out of being the prince, essentially. So and, and made him worthless in his role as a prince. But Megan has done so many things wrong. She could have easily done what Emma has done and gotten the brand deals that she wanted, but she perpetrated a fraud. She came in not with legitimate intentions to do what she said she was going to do. She came in it with ulterior motives to brand herself off of the back of her husband's legacy. And that's where she went wrong. Now, Emma, is this new uh, face of Victoria's Secrets. Globally, there is an enormous audience of people who are fascinated with the British family and aristocracy. This is what this lady who wrote this book, Influence, said. And presumably, the brand will position her as being Emma from this world in the hope that this allows them to reach global millennial consumers who are influenced by the Princess of Wales. And then, of unfortunately, they say the, the Duchess of Sussex in this article. And that's what I've always been saying. We don't want these millennials branded and looking at someone like Megan as an example because she's the wrong example. We need to look at people like Catherine, Princess of Wales, and Emma. She is doing it in a way where she's getting along with her family despite... The, the things that are not good, despite not getting along with certain people of the family, she's able to overcome that and and continue doing what she's doing in a very graceful, upholding kind of way. Then has carved out a career as an IT woman ambassador for glamorous labels, including Dose and Cabana, and is regularly seen at fashion shows for the likes of Burberry, Gucci, and Louis Vuitton. And, you know, we all know what Megan... She couldn't just hold out and do the work and earn her spot in royalty. Megan couldn't do it. She was too anxious and she felt like she was too old to just go do her, you know, so, so she did it the way she did it and it was a wrong move. They're not sure if she's going to appear in the Victoria shows. However, she's definitely going to be the face of this new uh, perfume daring that is going to be, you know, by Victoria's Secret. Now, the brand attempted to, attempted to appeal to Gen Z through leading its marketing inclusivity, but it's widely criticized and realistically that demographic is buying their lingerie from businesses like Fenty Skims. I mean, there's like so many high level brands here and Megan has been overlooked. The rea reality is, is her high profile agent in Hollywood has not been able to secure her any big deals. And I think any big deals that could be secured um, by Megan, along with her agency, will be doing something that could harm the brand. Because people are seeing how Megan and Harry are. They're just not well liked, so much so we know that Harry's even trying to get back into the UK to work, which shows you he's not happy. Megan has completely... Uh, ruined their brand. They, they don't have a shot at trying to secure anything that is going to be high level, high profile because they've they've ruined their opportunities. And Emma is on her way to really 
doing so many great things. Now, this is the thing about Emma and how she did things correctly, because she actually married into this arist aristocracy in 2013. She's been in it for a while. It is only now through small projects that she's done leading up to this moment that she's gotten this huge brand deal. The way Megan did it is she wanted to get these things like right away, like immediately. Hire me, <laughs> you know. She even put out those false claims about her uh, being the next face of Dior and they were like, what? No, we don't have any contract with Meghan Markle for our, our, our Dior line. And, you know, the way Megan manipulates things is tries to get people to look at her to, so that she can be the face of a, of a big brand. She can't do it because she doesn't have the humility, the desire of just doing the work. Because when you watch the documentary with Emma and her husband and how they take care of this property, Longleat, you know, they go into the town where they're their estate is and they have relationships with the people of this town that live on their property and so she's been very well liked because she you know she's there for the people she's there to support the the her husband's property because that's their money making potential with their with their tours of the the, the zoo and all the things that they have going on on the property it was a lot of work to do, and, and that's the thing. She did the work, and Megan didn't want to come in to do any work for the royal family. She wanted to come in and use their name and go back to Hollywood and, and, and market, it, market the name, and she went about it the wrong way, and now we see her husband is completely miserable. He wants to go back to the United Kingdom, and their lives are in a shambles now. And you have to almost wonder when these children get older, what are they going to think when they have no relationship with Megan's family, no relationship with their father's family? Their lives are going to completely be not enriched by the relationships of their families. They're, 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 they're setting themselves up for even more problems in the future. Harry is miserable. That's the only reason why we can see him wanting to get back into the fold in the United Kingdom, which I don't think is going to happen. I don't think they're ever going to be able to go back to the UK because they are so not well liked. Harry, maybe, maybe. But Megan is in California as we speak right now, tw uh, twiddling her thumbs, crying, like just, just going through the house, probably crazy as a bat. And just not understanding why people don't like her. Because we know the most recent reports that came out that said that she was in tears by how people received her, her company, American Riviera Orchard. They're getting ready to lose the Netflix deal. And they just don't have what they need to be sustainable in California. And then you can only see Megan probably watching this Emma get all of these things that are so aligned with what she wants. And Megan's not getting it, even with her agent. And it's it's almost it's so tragic. It's it's once again the, the the imitation of royal life. We are watching a complete disaster in real time. And Emma is smiling all the way. Now here's the other difference between the two ladies. Emma's father is, is a billionaire. She comes from money. Okay, so this is how she got into the circles to meet her husband. Megan came from a middle class family. She came not from poverty, but she certainly had the better uh, growing up than most women who are in California, you know, struggling, trying to make a life for themselves because California is not cheap and you have to have money to live a pretty good quality of life, especially to go to private schools, which Megan did. So she came from a decent family, but you're going to always have conflicts with your families. You're going to always have issues and trying to dis, just distance yourself from people because you don't like them or you, you're embarrassed or you feel like you're, you're better than them. These are reasons that most people can't relate to. People can't relate to someone like a Meghan Markle doing what she's doing to her family. But at the end of the day, it's your family and you try to do right and you try to at least be a good person. Megan can't even do that. She can't even be a good person to just get along with people for the sake of getting along and having relationships that your children can enjoy one day. 
And now look at Harry, completely miserable, living in California alone, just twiddling his thumbs, trying to find something to do. It is a complete sham what's happening with Harry and Meghan right now. It is a disaster. They are a sinking ship. Okay. Um, but I'm just so happy to, to look at Emma and what she is doing. Uh, she's, she, she's held strong in her relationship with her husband and all the controversy she's had to deal with, with the racist mother-in-law, but she's doing it and she's got two children and she's making a way with the things she wants to do within the aristocracy. She's making it happen by being a good person, a nice person. And you just look at her and you can tell she's a, she's a sweet person. I mean, I look at this Emma and I think she's a lovely lady and, and just beautiful, beautiful in character. You can even tell from watching the documentary about her father-in-law. And I just, I'm just so pleased to give a, a nice positive example of a woman who has shown the way of how to do it. And it just, just makes me look at everything that is happening with Harry and Meghan and just think it is such a shame. But hey, you got an example. It's too bad you didn't listen, Meghan Markle. It's too bad you didn't listen. With that, that's all I have for this video and I will see you all in the next one. Toodles!